total dissolved solids. What are they? What levels are considered too high for your pool? Is having high TDS levels in your pool problematic? And what can you do to reduce the levels of TDSs in your pool? Well, folks, in today's episode of Pool School, I'm going to do my best to answer those questions for you. So stay tuned. Before we go any further, I'd like to ask you to please like this video if you do and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Also, please share my channel with your friends who own pools who might be looking to save a few bucks servicing their pools themselves. Okay, so I have had several emails over the past couple years asking me if I would address total dissolved solids. Another name for them is TDSs, so I'm gonna be referring to them that way. Um, there's a few things to know about them, and um, honestly, in my personal, period, uh, personal opinion, and again, this is just in Arizona and my experience, I don't spend a lot of time worrying about total dissolved solids. I actually spend more time thinking about the cyanuric acid levels of a pool uh, and the pool water. Um, that's just my opinion. Some of you may differ on that. I also want to uh, let you know that I am not an expert chemist. So there's probably some of you out there who know far more about total dissolved solids and chemistry and water and molecular structures and all that than I do. And um, you know, feel free to pipe in if you want, excuse me, in the comment section below. However, I'm going to try to give you some simple things that will help you to understand total dissolved solids and hopefully you won't have to worry about them that much as I don't either. Okay, first question. What are total dissolved solids? Okay, simply put, total dissolved solids, or TDSs, is a measurement of everything that has ever dissolved in your pool water. Okay, so that includes uh, minerals that separate from your chemicals such as calcium or sodium. Every bit of dissolved dust, pollen, swimmer waste, yeah, and algae residue or algae remains, everything that has ever dissolved in your pool water are TDSs. Question number two, what levels of TDSs is considered too high for pool water? Well, honestly, that's kind of something you're going to get varied responses on. I've heard it said, and again, remember, we measure total dissolved solids like we measured a lot of things in parts per million when it comes to pool water and pool chemistry. So some people say 1,500 parts per million of TDSs is too high. Others say 5,000 parts per million of TDSs is too, is too high. I know that's a big span. Here's my thought, though. If you have a salt pool, most salt generators Okay, remember, salt is a total dissolved solid in your pool, the salinity. Most salt generators operate at levels between 2,800 and 3,500 parts per million of salt. So that kind of tells me that 1,500 parts per million of total dissolved solids is going to be a little bit low and a little bit extreme um, for, for when you're talking about total dissolved solids being too high. Because if you have a salt pool, you're going to have to at least have 3,000 parts per million to actually have the salt generator work. So that's kind of a rough ballpark. I would say this, if your total dissolved solids are around 4,000 parts per million, it's probably a good idea that those are pretty high. So that's my thought. Question number three, are high TDSs in your pool a problem? Well, in my opinion, I don't think they really are that big a problem because it takes a long time for TDSs to accumulate. Um, Again, uh, if you have a pool where there's a lot of evaporation, you're gonna lose, and then your, your pool water is refreshing itself through an auto feed, um, you're gonna be diluting it a little bit. Also, if you have a filter that you have to backwash, uh, like a sand filter or a DE filter, every time you do that, you're going to empty some water out, and so you're gonna replace that, with, that water with fresh water, so that's gonna dilute it as well. But honestly, my own personal opinion, and some of you may not agree with me, I don't really think TDSs or high TDSs are really that uh, big a problem. What I will say is this, the, a couple of the biggest issues you're going to have when it comes to having really high total dissolved solids, and I'm talking really high, um, you, you, your pool water is going to have a tough time holding on to free chlorine. Okay, um, similar to when your cyanuric levels are way too high also. If you haven't seen my video on 
uh, changing your pool water, why and when, you might want to watch that one. I'll put a link in the description of this video below to that directly so you don't have to hunt through my videos. Um, I've also heard, and I've not experienced it though, but I've heard that <clears throat> if your TDSs are too high, your pool water may appear cloudy or a little hazy. But there are a lot of other reasons that can happen too. So before you get all panicky and go, oh my gosh, I've got high TDSs, hold on. I've got a checklist of things you can go through that help you to discern whether or not it really is high TDSs or not. All right, number four. How do I reduce the TDS levels in my pool? Okay, first of all, and I know that there are people that say there are, I don't honestly have not experienced that. There are no chemicals you can add to your pool water to lower your total dissolved solids, okay? Basically what you have to do is you have to dilute the water or dilute the total dissolved solids. So basically the best way to do that is to drain and refill your pool. Now again, don't go jumping in out in there and going, oh, I got to drain and refill my pool. Don't do it yet. I'm going to give you a checklist of things to go through so that you make sure you, you eliminate other possibilities before you go and drain out your pool water, okay? Um, understand again that that is really the only way to do it. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have like a sand filter or DE filter, when you're backwashing your filter, you're going to be replacing that water that you backwashed out of your pool with fresh water. So that's going to slow down the buildup of total dissolved solids in your pool, okay? So if you have a cartridge filter, unfortunately, that's not gonna be the case. But again, it still takes quite some time for your total dissolved solids to accumulate. Relatively speaking, again, environment comes into play, how many people you have in your pool, all those kind of things come into play. And also, the type of water, whether you have municipal water or city water or whatever water in your pool, it depends on the total dissolved solids that came with that water when you put it in. But don't go in panic yet. The, uh, again, but the best, the only way really to get rid of or lower the TDS levels in your pool is to dilute it. And that means changing water out. All right, so as I said just a minute ago, before you go and drain and replace the water in your pool because you're having some kind of issues, I wanna go over a list of things that you can go through and check before you then determine maybe it's my total dissolved solids. Again, it's been my experience, I've never had a pool issue come up because of high, extremely high total dissolved solids. Now that also may be because of the way I service my pools and how I recommend changing the water, but I'll give you that as well in this video as well. So, okay. So first on the list of questions you wanna ask yourself before you drain and refill your pool. Number one, am I running my filter long enough for the season that I'm in? And if you haven't seen my video on filter run times, please check it out. I'm going to put a link to that one in the description below so you can also watch that video. But suffice it to say, in the summer, you're looking at eight to nine hours of filter run time. In the off season, maybe four to six hours of run time. So that's the first question you want to ask yourself again. Am I running my filter long enough? The second question you want to ask and answer yes to is, is my filter medium clean? If it's a cartridge filter, when was the last time I cleaned my cartridges? If you haven't cleaned them for six to, six to 10 months, or maybe eight to 10 months, maybe it's time to clean those, okay? If you haven't backwashed your sand filter or DE filter in a while, you're gonna wanna do those. Again, sand filters, probably wanna backwash during the swim season every two to four weeks, and, and then in the off season, maybe every four to six weeks, and then DE filters during the peak seasons of swimming, maybe you're looking at backwashing it and recharging it every six to eight weeks, and in the off season, maybe every eight to 10 weeks. So is your filter medium clean? That's question number two. Question number three, is the flow in my system to and from the pool and through the filter unhindered or unobstructed? So that means are your valves all open, okay? Uh, people sometimes close valves and forget that they did that. Another thing is make sure your skimmer baskets and your pump basket are clean. All right, so that's going to make a difference. Also, is your impeller clogged in your motor? Okay, please make sure you can answer yes to you to that question. Is my water flowing 
unobstructed through my system. Question number four. Are my chlorine, pH, and alkalinity levels and cyanuric acid levels all in the ideal range? Okay, so let's, if you want, I'm going to put a link to a video on testing your pool chemistry uh, in the description below here. So you can watch that video as well on uh, checking your pool chemistry. Again, chlorine, pH, and alkalinity levels, are they in the ideal range? Hopefully you answer yes to that one as well. Question number five, and this is a big one when it comes to cloudy water, and I've talked about this a lot in my video on algae and algicides and why you don't need them, and also in keeping phosphate levels low. And if you haven't watched those videos, please do so. I'm gonna put links to those videos down in the description as well. Are my phosphate, I'm sorry, are my phosphate levels low? Okay, if you have high phosphates, that is a real good thing that will help breed algae and it will cause all kinds of cloudiness in your pool. So are your phosphate levels low? And remember, you want low phosphate levels in your pool because algae feeds on phosphates. And number six, the last question, we've reached the end of my questions. Are my cyanuric acid or CYA levels in the ideal range? Now, if your cyanuric acid levels are too low, your, your pool is going to have a tough time holding the chlorine. By the way, cyanuric acid is also called stabilizer and conditioner in pool stores. So it, just make sure you know that it's cyanuric acid or CYA. But again, if your cyanuric acid levels are too low, your pool is not going to hold chlorine. If they're too high, the same thing is going to happen. And I have a lesson again, I'm going to put a link to it in the description below about uh, changing your pool water, why and when. Because really to me, the best thing to consider whether or not to change your pool water has to do with cyanuric acid levels. If your cyanuric acid levels are too high, let's say 300 to 400 parts per million, okay? And again, you'll see the test strips that, that I recommend. I like the AquaCheck Silver test strips. They're seven in one, and they, also, they actually uh, test cyanuric acid levels and if they're if they're over 300 it's probably a good time to consider changing your pool water but cyanuric acid levels if they're in the ideal range you should be okay all right so if you've answered yes to all those questions okay then maybe you have a total dissolved solid issue and there are test kits that you can get to measure those um, you can also take it into a pool supply store and have them measure it for you. I think it's very difficult. I don't know any pool stores or, or myself either that have test kits that can test the source of each of the total dissolved solids. So you either have them a lot or none or you don't. That's kind of how it works. So you can test the levels of total dissolved solids. It's very hard to isolate what the solids are. Um, but if you for some reason discern after answering all those questions and it's all yes, everything is good, then you might have an issue with total dissolved solids. So you can either take it to be tested or it might be time to change your water. Let me make a very important point here. Changing your water out, you can rent a pump and drain it and refill your pool yourself. But I honestly would recommend, this is one of those areas, contact somebody, uh, a licensed, insured, and bonded repair pool person and ask for referrals from your friends who've had good experiences and have them come out and give you a quote on draining and refilling your pool. When they do, make absolutely certain that in that price they include, with that service, the adding of all new startup chemicals so that way your pool water gets started up correctly and then you start right out on the best foot possible. So again, I've talked about total dissolved solids and personally, I don't really worry too much about them. Honestly, I don't. Um, uh, one of the reasons I think is because I kind of have a system out in Arizona based on pools and how they get used in my area. And in my area, I tell people that with general use of your pool during the years and et cetera, you usually want to change your pool water out every I'm sorry, every five to seven years, okay? So that's kind of what the, the standard is out in this area where I live, is again, changing your water out every five to seven years, 
and then doing a whole restart again or start up with the chemicals and that keeps your pool doing pretty good. Now, when they do drain and refill a pool, I tell them don't do it during the summer months. You don't want to do it during the hot months. You want to do it in the cooler months where when you drain your pool, your plaster or your pebble tech or whatever is not going to dry out so fast that it starts to crack. So that's kind of how I handle it with my clients and it seems, and, and a lot of guys that I work, I've worked for and um, talked to, they do it the same way out here. So that's sufficient for us in our area and it might be for you as well. So as I wrap up this video, I hope it's made sense, but also I want to remind you, I am not an expert at pool chemistry or chemistry, um, and this obviously by far is not an exhaustive list of things that could be causing um, issues with your pool. But um, it's what I've learned and it seems to work very well for me. Um, all I'm hoping to do is give you a, a brief education on total dissolved solids and answer those questions about them and help you to get a better understanding of what they do, what they are, what levels to look at, and what can be done about them. One more disclaimer, for those of you who have salt pools or uh, salt systems in your pools, again, remember, your salt generator operates anywhere between 2,800 and 3,500 parts per million of salt or salinity in your pool. So those are some pretty high TDSs, right? So don't look at your TDSs and go, oh my gosh, I have 3,200 parts per million of TDSs, so I need to change my water. No, your salt generator needs those levels in order to generate the salt and convert it into a purifier for your pool. So again, I'd look at going, if you're like between 4,000 and 5,000 or more parts per million on total dissolved solids, then you might want to think about diluting your water a bit, either replacing it completely or diluting it. So folks, that is my lesson on total dissolved solids. I really hope it made sense. I know it's a lot of information, but honestly, again, I wouldn't worry too much about them. I'd keep an eye on your cyanuric acid levels, and once they get above 300, between 300 and 400 and up, uh, it might be a good idea to change your water out at that point. So I hope it all made sense. If you have any questions or comments, remember you can always post them in the comment section below here. Remember all the links that I said I'm gonna to put to those videos that are in the, in the description of this uh, video as well. And if you want to also, you can email me directly and my email address is gonna come across the screen here. It's kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Once again, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Please like this video if you did, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And I would really appreciate it if you share this channel with your friends who own pools as well. And as always, I wanna remind you, have fun, be safe, and always, always, always watch those kids around water. And I'll see you next time.